It's no secret that seafood is one of Vancouver's biggest assets. The abundance, the variety and flavors are a boon for local chefs. But it comes with costs to the environment and future stocks, which isn't going unnoticed by those who want to protect the precious resource and demand it of local chefs. Oh, sustainability is it's vital, I think, not just to the restaurant community, but to the public in general. Well, you know, sustainability is huge. You know, we have such a strong tie to our environment here in Vancouver, you know, because we're outside all the time. We, we see when things aren't right. We feel when things aren't sustainable. And so from a chef's point of view, it's almost part, it's al we have to be sustainable. You know, I've, I've got three young kids and I mean, you know, I want to make sure that they're able to, to eat and enjoy the same things I enjoyed when I was a kid. You know what, I think the, it's the industry. Um, a lot of the chefs that I know are very passionate but what they do, they do try to put a local component to it, for example, using um, local ingredients, try to be um, sustainable, try to be ocean-wise, and all those are the, 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 the good things that's happening in the Vancouver food scene. You know, Vancouver's a very, you know, there's a lot of people that are very conscientious about the environment, conscientious about, you know, what they, what they, um, what they consume and to have restaurants be res you know responsible for that is just that much more in terms of educating the public on what's up. We have such a responsibility to put f in front of our guests things that are good for our, the environment because it, it's it's maybe cheaper, maybe quicker, maybe easier to not do it. But you know what? I have two sons and I want them to be able to eat wild salmon and BC spot prawns and oysters and scallops and albacore tuna for the rest of their lives. And so daddy's a chef. Daddy feeds 5,000 people a week. He needs to put sustainable seafood in front of them. And my guests are asking for it now. So now I have to do it. You know, Vancouver very good because uh, David Suzuki uh, Foundation involved in you know, ocean wise, uh, you know, seafood. Uh, sust sustainability. So we use all the ingredients in uh, all sust sustainable. So that is uh, for you know next generation young people for my kid you know for forever. On one hand, I think sustainability thing is great because there are a lot of really awful things. Well, there's a lot of awful things happening in the whole food system. It's not just in fishing. Because like the oceans and what grows in the ocean is so close to us right here, that's what we're focusing on, and I'm glad it's happening. I'm glad some people, especially people like Rob Clark, has, you know, he's the one that made it happen here. Wasn't it for him? I mean, somebody else might have done it, but he's the one that really made it happen. But on the other hand, it's now become a great marketing device. Over and over and over, you kind of hear about the you know hundred mile menu and this and that and all that kind of stuff and and which is all important, of course. I mean, we were always using sustainable, we're always using local, we're always using doing all those things. But that's just a given to me and to 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 us, and me and my team. I mean, that's just something that of course we're going to do. So we don't we don't need to talk about it or use that as an excuse to to do lazy food or to do lazy service. No, it's not a bandwagon. It should not be a bandwagon. It's not a bandwagon that any of the chefs have gotten into it. We do generally believe in it. Ocean Wise, which was started by the Vancouver Aquarium, was actually a program started by the Monterey Bay Aquarium in California. So they've adopted this program. They've, they've built it, nurtured it, made it bigger, made it better. Now our guests are, A, they're recognizing the symbol on the menus, B, they're, they're seeing, okay, when I come to Vancouver, I know that I can eat some of the best seafood in the world, and it's sustainable. It has to go where it's going. We as a chef have a responsibility, whether you're in a hotel, whether you're in a 30-seat restaurant or a 150-seat restaurant, whether you're in a 155-room hotel like myself or a 400-room hotel. It does become challenging depending on the scale, but we're feeding hundreds and thousands of people a year in Vancouver of this products. It can't be a trend. We are conscientious how much water we are using, how much uh, electricity we are using, how much 
you know, what kind of produce that we are bringing in. It has to be part of this. What kind of wastes we are, we are throwing away. So it is not a, uh, it's not a bandwagon. And the day the chefs actually, if somebody there believes that, I think eventually they're going to realize that the business is going to falter down because everybody else around them is on the, is, is realizing the fact that we got to be really conscientious of our environment. I mean, uh, how can you not be conscientious of your environment, where you live in? You have to be. It's, it's, it's part of your stewardship towards the earth. The First Nations people did it. The Indians in India did it. The villagers in India did it. Why have we suddenly stopped even thinking about this? And, you know, we've gotten on to the, to the project of, like, just waste. It's not. It's not right. You know, if we knew what was going on underneath our oceans, if it was going on uh, on top of, the, you know, the earth, it wouldn't happen. So we, we, I feel like I'm an ambassador for, for our oceans, for ocean wise, for sustainability. And, you know, if it's a trend, uh, I will fight it until it, it dies because it has to just become second nature. It cannot be a trend. It should not be a trend. The day sustainability becomes a trend, we as a society have failed that fish that's in the ocean, that animal that was being killed or, or, or removed, or the, the produce that we have produced from the earth. We cannot. Sustainability means everything. So what happens if we don't heed the warnings? I think we are hooked. I think we are totally... Uh, I think we're going to have produce coming out of you know, our, our farms that is not going to be that delicious. It is not going to have the nutritional value in it. The soil is going to be not have the same flavors. The seafood is going to be tainted, you know, have higher levels of mercury and all that stuff. Um, I think our wines are not going to produce the way that they did a few years ago. Now is the time. It's a very crucial point where we are right now. We are at a fork where we can either go to this direction and totally mass produce, or we can go in the direction and say, okay, slow down. It's okay. I like the way things are sort of going now in the way things where, where people are eating different things. Even though it's kind of, you know, it's trendy now, things like, although it's actually almost had its 15 minutes of fame, pork belly and stuff like that. Unusual things. Your chefs that are actually taking a risk and doing unusual things that normally you don't see in Vancouver. It's catching on, catching on a little bit, but not heavily. And it's not because it's trendy that I, I like it. It's because I don't think any part of any animal should be scorned at all. If something's going to die so we can eat it, we should embrace the whole thing and not just the loin or the chop or the, you know, the boneless fillet of salmon. So part of the sustainable aspect is also is that you eat pretty much everything on the food chain. I think the most important part is we cannot screw up our oceans. We need to have sustainable oceans. Very important. Same thing goes with farming and same thing goes with wine. So even if we have little less, it's okay. As long as at the end of the day, we have little bit for everybody. Because you do not want to reach a point where it's like 50 years have gone by and you're like, oh, oh, we have no prawns left in the ocean. Oh, oh, we have no halibut left in the ocean. Oh, we are producing just mass jug wines from Okanagan. You don't want that. The economics should not dictate how we do things on our plate. It should be the passion of the chef, passion of the human being that shows what's on the plate. You know, it's just a nat it should be a natural thing for a chef and for, for an owner of a restaurant or all, all that kind of thing, just as in living in a place like Vancouver. Whereas if you take, you know, New York, it's definitely not nearly as big. But I think Vancouver, as media and regular kind of people, expect it out of people and they expect, you know, to you to do the right things.